हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द अद्वैता डीकोडिंग रियलिटी पॉडकास्ट द पर्पस ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट इज टू अनकवर द नेचर ऑफ रियलिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड डिफरेंट डायमेंशंस डिफरेंट लेयर्स ऑफ दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स मल्टीफैसेटेड रियलिटी एंड टू डिस्कवर हु वी ट्रूली आर we will explore various concepts and various aspects of this existence in this podcast and we will talk to various people with an open mind and a curious heart to understand their perspectives and their experiences with reality all this to decode reality hello everyone welcome to today's decoding reality podcast and today we have with us barbara with and Barbara is an international peace activist, an award-winning author, publisher, a psychic channel and a performer. She is the co-founder of Conflict Revolution, a revolutionary way to resolve conflicts of the psyche based on her work channeling Albert Einstein. She has authored around 6 books on metaphysics including Imagining Einstein and more. So today we will understand a lot of new concepts about channeling about metaphysics and we will understand more about Barbara throughout this episode. So welcome Barbara to the Advaita Decoding Reality podcast. Well, thank you so John for having me. <laughs> I'm very excited to have these conversations. Yeah, same yeah. here. Let's start with uh, your life so far. What has brought you here? From where did it all start? And like if uh, if you can please start with what exactly is channeling for those who do not know about it. Yes, let me start with that. So the best way I can describe channeling is when yeah. someone writes a song and I am yeah. a songwriter. So when yeah. I write a song, I go into the non-physical and yeah. I listen for the song. Mm-hmm. And then I come back here and I've got my piano and my voice and I and I recreate it here. That's kind of what yeah. musicians do and that's channeling. What yeah. and that's how I started using that ability was through songwriting very young at 5 years old I climbed up on the piano and I was writing songs okay. by the time I was 12 and I left high school and went right on the road as a singer songwriter and performer okay. so that okay. was the opening door to then eventually uh-huh. do I think what your listeners might be curious about is then how do you go from singing to yeah. einstein yeah correct and, there's a long big gap yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so when i was in high school i had a friend yeah. who had a mother who did channeling yeah yeah we didn't call it channeling mm-hmm. she just you have to come and see what my mother does and her very oh. serene mother would sit and close her eyes and light a candle and there's a picture of jesus and she would talk uh, to us and it was like okay. she was had could see right into our soul she was saying things that were like not about okay. what's going to happen tomorrow okay. but about who we were and what we were going through and okay. that was my first introduction to that kind Channel. of channeling we're talking about me like mediums okay okay and what exactly was that person doing like she was channeling a particular entity or she said she would close her eyes and it felt okay. like she went into outer space and okay. listened for the words and then okay she was an antenna picking okay. up your higher power and then somehow bringing it back and articulating it to your human mind that's how okay. she described yeah. herself so there wasn't anybody else okay okay got it it was more like an art right okay okay so that was sort of your first introduction to this channeling and all metaphysics of it yes and i i saw her maybe huh? once a year for many many years and would she would give me a reading and i would take hmm. notes and then i would write down at that time what i thought it meant okay and then 
I would go live my life okay. and see what it really meant. Like, what did uh, it really mean? Not what you thought mm -hmm. it meant, not what you heard. So that was a lot of my early training into, uh, into slowly then when I started automatic writing one day, it was very spontaneous. Okay. I was writing a letter to someone and suddenly my hands felt like they were okay. taken over and huh. they started saying something completely different. And of course, much more loving and compassionate than I had been writing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I knew what it was, see, because I, you know, from all my, my singing and then the channeling and, but I still was hmm. taken aback, like, what, what, what is this? And so I hmm. asked, I was typing, hmm. Hmm. who are you? Hmm. And they said, sound. I mean, I get it. I live hmm. in the world of sound as a songwriter, yeah. a young songwriter. Yeah. So I, yeah. that was okay with me. Because I was going to yeah, be yeah. an antenna. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. But what they wrote, uh, though, was so okay. loving and compassionate about me. Because I had a lot of conflicts okay. and shame and dark stuff. And they reframed uh, what was going on and made it really meaningful and kind of okay. magical. And it kind of got me like, really? I saw myself in this whole new light. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I would kind of like that a lot to finally feel, yeah. you know, like I'm, like I'm taking care of my needs in some way. So Good. yeah, I started to mm -hmm. do channeling for my friends. So from there, it's your, your journey started. Uh, like yes, that journey. was it. But um, the way I understand it, the channeling, it's basically using our physical bodies as an instrument for something which is not physical, right? We we are tuning into some something outside of us to which we do not have uh, direct access to, whether it be a sort of uh, intelligence of a higher dimension or whether it be some people, you know, uh, channel those who are dead. So something which is which we do not have access to, but we get a temporary access to that what you know subtle entity. So that is channeling. But first of all, there are a lot of methods, and there are a lot of uh, I think types of channeling. I don't. I'm not an expert on this. So uh, can you please explain what exactly you do and the method you use and the outcomes of it? Yes. So the method that I use was the one that my mentor did. I mm -hmm. close my eyes, mm -hmm. get out of the way. I mm -hmm. imagine that my ego, mm -hmm. which is going to keep yakety yakking, mm -hmm. going, I, I, I shrink it down to this little like manifestation mm -hmm. of my ego and I put it down a little chair over here. And that leaves all mm -hmm. this space. And then I listen and mm. I I can't tell you the mystery of how it happens, how, how it tunes in. It's all electromagnetics. Mm. I'm imagining in yeah. some level of more. Yeah. But, yeah. um, and I, you know, if we were, if I were to show you mm. Einstein's unified field map, I could show yeah. you where it was on the map, but we all okay. have it. we just okay. don't tune into it it's like you know the old radios okay. you dial the radio and it'd be scratchy yeah. all the way and got to the one where it's tuned to and you could hear it mm. and yeah, then you yeah. move on well that station is still there so those dead huh. people you know that energy is still there it's just being able to tune into we, we don't have direct access to it like most of us don't have access to it because of our identification with our subtle bodies. So I study a lot of Indians, ancient Indian scriptures and Vedanta and texts like that. So they they elaborately explain the nature of reality in a very scientific way. Uh, the way it is described in those scriptures is, first of all, we have a physical body with blood and bones. And then there is something called as the subtle body, which uh, the Western teachings call as spirit or soul or 
something like that and then there is called something called as the causal body which is uh, very deep but when we speak about talking to the dead we are basically making a temporary connection with that subtle body of uh, those who have left their physical bodies so i think that is what is happening so when you said you were channeling sound was was that a higher dimension being like what was it exactly you know when they said they were sound i mm. felt my body relax and not question what that actually meant it just mm-hmm. seemed to me that now you have to understand i grew up mm. channeling mm. right mm. music so i would mm-hmm. i had this natural ability to go into the nothing and and listen mm. and pull stuff out mm. and then articulate yeah. it so uh, like this is, when you say you but oh, just one minute when you say yeah. you were channeling music uh, you mean intuition right like what we call or or it was it something else like you were, were music? you music music I'm a com- yeah yeah i'm a composer and a and a yeah. songwriter yeah 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 got it yeah. so are you calling your own intuitions as channeling or was it did you physically feel like something was coming through you or how do you describe I, it i physically felt like i left my body and went into okay. outer space it uh-huh. that's what it felt like and 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 i uh-huh. could hear like the first four bars of a song okay would you be my alpha and i would come back and i would play would you be my alpha and then like okay. two more bars would come out and okay. then i go back up and i'd listen so that's the process okay. i was doing just intuitively and naturally why i don't know okay. i was gifted i guess you know what i mean it, okay okay but got it the, but but the, no one taught it taught this to you this came to you okay yeah. and this is and the way you're describing it it is not intuition right it is not your own self that is well, like it, it it felt to you like something outside of you was well it did but first mm. of all as i started that process i was 13 and 14 so i don't know if okay. i had a concept R- remember, of remember yeah yeah got just it just so much being i was still like enamored mm. of being in the process of it mm-hmm. right i'm i'm so young and i can do this and how come these songs mm. that are mm-hmm. whatever but as mm. i look back on it i think it was mm. uh there was a great mm. depth of emotion from my mm. upbringing which was abusive mm. etc okay. and i need to get that out i need to get that mm. emotion out of me so i could sing these songs and mm. get it at least through my singing of it i could get it out of me but in the process okay. i learned this way to operate in the uh, non physical we call it and, and uh, intuitive uh, i guess you yeah know, i had a question for you too but uh, you go yeah yeah when did, when did it become your you know your life's purpose for you to be this right like at what point did you decide this is going to be the rest of my life i had been channeling for 5 or 6 years had mm-hmm. clients and i decided mm-hmm. i wanted to channel for a group of people mm-hmm. i was reading edgar casey and yeah uh jane uh-huh. roberts what would they say yeah. what is this you know mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. people would come for readings on a regular basis and we'd never mm-hmm. talk about what they said they just seemed to get something from the information which was i mm-hmm. i got it i get it too from it so mm-hmm. but i never questioned so In 1993, mm. I decided mm. to pull together a group and I found these women found me. Mm-hmm. Uh Kim and Teresa and all okay. of their friends showed up for readings okay. just through referrals. And okay. it dawned on me, oh my gosh, mm. here's the group and it mm. dawned on them at the same time, oh we have this group, maybe she'd come and have some wine mm. and we could talk about all this stuff and So yeah. I did my first group channel in December of 1993 and that was okay. really I did I I couldn't have told you they told us huh. the voices who turned out to be huh. angels told us okay. that we have a mission and okay. the mission was world peace one person at a time starting okay. with you 
okay. we are a bunch of angels they said huh and this okay. was new because i was an antenna but okay, okay whatever huh. let's listen <laughs> yeah they were going to yeah. teach us this re revolutionary way to resolve okay. conflict that was also okay. a pathway to global peace okay. and that they had this they had this theory but they needed human beings to test it okay. on real okay, life okay. conflict so the uh, three of us hmm. became the psychic sorority and dedicated hmm. ourselves to I, we have groups, record the sessions, transcribe the sessions, and then see mm. what is this mm. revolutionary process they're talking about and how can we make it happen. And mm. of course, we had our first fight, we had our first mm. conflict, that mm. we could go to that transcript and it, it told us exactly in that moment, mm. if you're involved in a conflict, mm. the root of your part of it is inside you hmm and we all stopped because we were all pointing our fingers well if you only you would mm. well if only you would if only you would and we all stopped yeah. and we yeah instantly came back to the table i mm. was now going okay so i probably mm. should have mm. and mm. the whole dynamic of the conflict shifted mm. uh it's, just like it's about that. taking responsibility but for ourselves, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But the, mm. the way in which we were brought together to, to test this. Anyway, so yes, mm. my first mm. book is mm -hmm. are these diaries of this time period that documented the true story mm. of what happened because they told us in the beginning, mm. leave mm -hmm. a paper trail because later on, okay. this is the uh -huh. history of how, you, how we got here today. So hmm. that was the first book, Diaries of a Psychic Sorority. And okay. um, so now and, and I know these... I can talk to angels, I guess. Uh -huh. So these angels are higher dimensional beings. So basically you had been channeling them for years through, when you, when you say uh, the readings that you were doing with your clients, it was basically this, right? It's the channeling. It was behind. exactly that, but, but I didn't call hmm. them angels. I never said it was mm. anybody. So okay, so it, okay, so it, it basically from okay, you didn't have any um, story for that. What was happening? Yeah, mm. I didn't. I just had voices, and mm. if you found value in having a reading, I'm, I was yeah, glad to be good. there. But mm. otherwise, yeah, yeah, who cared? It yeah. was like yeah, correct. And I, I always wanted to know this. Do you, when, when you channel something like that, do you lose a part of yourself or how, what happens to you, your mind and your uh, identity when, when you channel? Well, I think Einstein eventually will get to that part of the story, but in the unified field, yeah, exactly. if you, if, uh -huh. you, if you imagine the unified field, there's, we have, we mm -hmm. have these spinning strings of gravitational mm -hmm. waves that mm -hmm. are you mine are mine but of course we're rooted in the same source mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. einstein has always said he just rides my gravitational wave so okay. it's like we share we share the wave uh okay. while it's a wave and then mm -hmm. when it goes you you named all those bodies Right, your study, hmm. all the different astral Phys bodies, physical body, get, and so you, yeah, 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 until you get yeah, to yeah. the physical body, and those, yeah, fit, yeah, those fit in the the map, the unified field map, which is good to see. But, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, so, okay. but but when you when you get to the body here, like if I was channeling huh. him right now, physical, you would just see huh. me. You wouldn't see him. Yeah, you just see me. But yeah, because so that, I don't know that how aspect is, that. is subtle. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that, we're that meeting is the subtle in, body. Right. So we're meeting in the subtle body. Yeah, yeah, correct. The exchange but, of information takes place on that level. But but you retain your own self at that point. So that that kind of that is just an interaction that happens with between yourself, between your subtle self and the other being. I think yeah. so. 
So is it is it like having a conversation like this, like how we are having a conversation right now, or is it an inflow of information that is coming to you, or is it a two way dialogue that is happening? Sometimes it's more like a jazz improvised saxophone solo. Okay. Have you when you listen to an improvised jazz? Yeah. You're just yeah. Sometimes it's just like that. I'm following something. Other times, yeah. I mm. see pictures that are clear that then I can describe. Mm. Okay. Sometimes it's like a ticker tape, like across uh -huh. the bottom of the. And it's really, it really is a beautiful art. It, I okay. I'm humbled gotcha. to to have it to be that. So. How would you describe a psychic? What exactly is being psychic? Because I think there are many elements to it, right? Like uh, uh, they call it telepathy, telekinesis. So there are a lot of things, but channeling is one aspect of being a psychic, I think. So how would you describe a psychic? Well, it, like you say, there's hmm. a lot of different ways people manifest. I have a friend who was hmm. in the CIA and did hmm. remote viewing. Oh. So she could zero in on physical forms, however they do remote viewing. Oh. I had another friend who, if you gave her your ring, mm -hmm. she could just look right at you and tell you everything, mm. you know, like what happened in your childhood. Um, mm -hmm. Then there's people who really specifically talk to dead people. Hmm. You know, here we have someone called the Long Island Psychic, Long Island Medium. Hmm. She's this hmm. kind of New York woman that walks around telling people that their dead relatives are. So huh. there's all kinds of ways it kinds can manifest. Of... Hmm. Correct. And mine just happens not to be hmm. um, focusing on questions like, is my boyfriend coming back? Or, hmm. you know, where did I leave my keys? It, Hmm. My gift of it is to bring forward this information from Einstein from afterlife that is hmm. enormous. And hmm. I think the music specially trained me to hmm. be able to bring back this vision like we have through the years. And now Correct. it's time really seems to have come. So, Correct. And you mentioned uh, Jane Roberts, the Seth Speaks material. And like that, I think... Uh, in the contemporary uh, teachers, there is Abraham Hicks teachings. So there are a lot of uh, channels, but they channel an alien being, right? Like some extraterrestrial being which wants to help humanity and and they want to do it through, and they do it through a channel. So that is, that is one aspect of channeling. That is one way of channeling. Yes. Yes, and like the Pleiadians, uh -huh. they're from Ple okay. Sirius. Or I don't know where I, I'm not a Pleiadian expert, but yes, okay, okay. There's that as yeah, well. Yeah, there, there, there are many teachers like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, yeah, I. Hmm. Oh, I the thing just the thing about the work that I do with Einstein, which we can get to how we got there, but yeah, we, we'll get it. These get are that, people. Yeah. These are people who lived before. Huh. These yeah, are people this who, in their lives mm -hmm. before, they worked for uh, peace. They had these same yeah. concerns. They had the same work that's being mm -hmm. carried on now. So mm -hmm. I love that mm -hmm. part about this group. Correct. Correct. And uh, are you familiar with the uh, raw material, the law of one? It is again, uh, it's a channeled material about the nature of reality, but it goes very deep into different aspects of existence. Uh, have you heard of it? I, I just had a, an incredible weekend huh. workshop in Austin, Texas, with uh -huh. a group of eight women who had been okay. studying the law of one together uh -huh. for two okay. years, like every single weekend. So okay, I got okay. a big introduction to it, and they okay. found Einstein's edition okay. was okay. 
because for many years i have been studying uh, a philosophy called as advaita vedanta so it is uh, a teaching of the upanishads if you heard of uh, upanishads they are around 10000 years old which uh, which came to rishis and yogis of ancient india and uh, it seems at at uh, higher states of consciousness at deep levels of meditation these knowledge sort of came to them so no one created this knowledge but it just uh, came to them and it's been it's it's uh, being passed on from generation to generation for 10000 years in india so this uh, this teaching of advaita vedanta is what modern western terminology it is called as non dualism so basically there is one absolute reality consciousness and everything else is a manifestation of consciousness so i've been studying this and i i came across the teachings of the law of one and it so beautifully coincided i mean they use different words and different terminologies but if we look at every channel right the words they use is different but they are pointing towards the same reality i feel so it sort of validates it because when so many thing so many people are speaking about the same thing i think there there must be some truth to it yeah and because think of how many people are in the world people hmm. hear it differently some people won't hear the einstein stuff maybe you never hear that but they'll hear hmm. they'll hear it doesn't it resonate way. with them yeah hmm so Correct. yeah i totally hmm. agree yeah and uh, con- coming to this from the uh, point of view of uh, skeptics right so there's a lot of skepticism about uh, all this and i was one of the biggest skeptics until i had some experiences with all this but i think channeling as a subject can be validated by science right because let's say because this is especially when it comes to channeling dead people or something like that it can be easily tested and validated with science so why do you think uh this has not become mainstream yet why do you think most of the people on this planet don't know about this or uh, science has not accepted this well let's start though first with the skepticism because i think skepticism mm. is an absolutely necessary part of absolutely science. yeah I th- mm. it's a, it's an art form and i'm i am a proud skeptic and if you mm. if you listen to my whole journey i'm skeptical mm. the whole way mm. it took me a long time mm. but it proved mm. itself and if 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 it didn't mm. then it wasn't true so i wholeheartedly support that mm. uh i mm. think this is a time i have to say i've been doing this for mm. 35 years faithfully oh. during mm-hmm. times when at least in the united states peace mm-hmm. and unity was kind of a nice idea but mm-hmm. everyone is being infiltrated with this cultural propaganda mm-hmm. that keeps us all not questioning and mm-hmm. keeps us all floating on mm-hmm. the surface and then sort of i call it subsumed mm-hmm. by the mm-hmm. external voices of culture but now mm-hmm. is a time it's hard to it's hard to admit that it's not there it's hard it people mm-hmm. are more and more coming mm-hmm. to not only want to talk about it and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. have it out but understand it mm-hmm. and Correct. how does it work mm-hmm. so i'm excited by that what's going mm-hmm. on right now with, yeah. with yeah everybody's opening yeah. up to like m- yeah more and more people are definitely accepting this but my curiosity was why has science not accepted it or why because this sort of a thing i think it can be easily validated right through some kind of a close study uh by, because let's say a person has died and this has very positive implications to the society and the world and even for practical applications let's say to solve a murder case channeling the person who has died is like maybe you know hypothetically might be the best solution for it so why do you think that has not happened like a scientific study on channeling i don't i'm not i can't say that i know that there hasn't been hmm. i haven't heard of any because i don't necessarily i haven't necessarily looked hmm. for hmm. Ha, where where are the studies but i'm sure hmm. there have been and 
Edgar Casey mm. alone did a mm. lot of documentation of mm. of that work. Like, I just think yeah. culture as a rule, mm. you come from a culture, listen to how far back the the roots of mm. this deep sacred tradition. knowledge that your tradition yeah. goes to. We don't really mm. have that over here. We, I think we Absolutely. have one of the least spiritual cultures that probably ever walked yeah. the planet here right now. Yeah, yeah. So because the history that, of the West is just around 200, 300 years, like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and we're, yeah. we're we're we have such mm. there's such turmoil going on, it, and okay. the more turmoil they foist upon us, the more people mm. don't pay attention to any of this. However, Correct. I mm. like I said, I think in the past six months even. I've seen mm -hmm. a huge uptick on people wanting to know this, like what I can become yeah. the change. I, I can do something internally that might help. This. Absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm Correct. ready now. Uh -huh. And me too. I'm ready. So. Correct. And I think someone should take this initiative and because if this comes in the mainstream, I think a lot of uh, positive things can happen in the society. So, and you know, I'm, that is my hope. Mm. That's my hope yeah. as I move forward on this peace tour is I'm reaching out Absolutely. to specific huh. scientist uh nasim huh. harriman he's been working on unified uh -huh. field theory and he's Absolutely. very close uh -huh. he's getting pieces of it but okay. if i show him the whole okay. thing who knows what okay. will spark his mind and Absolutely. and i think especially uh, yeah those uh, scientists who have the scientific mind right like we we sort of understanding philosophy is different but they break it down and they make it uh, acceptable to the large group of society so yeah scientists getting this is important yeah and i have to say i had one mm. Mm. event where mm. i presented to amateur mm. scientists amateur physicists amateur chemists mm. i thought mm. it was a mistake that they booked mm. me because i thought we were going more angelly and woo woo but here were mm. these scientists mm. and mm -hmm. i said mm. i don't know i'm not a scientist you know all i ever mm. wanted to be was a rock star so mm -hmm. but would you please look at this and tell me what you think mm. i don't care if you Correct. believe it's einstein in the party i Correct. don't i just want to Correct. know th is this a viable yeah. thing because i don't know objectively looking yeah. at it yeah mm. and all of them mm. the physicist was like You've huh. taken the zero point gravity theory and you've married it with the blah, 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 huh. blah, to make the blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I don't know. I, I didn't. It's okay. just what he okay. told me. And huh. they, yeah. So I'm very even better huh. <laughs> ready <laughs> to face the scientists. Hey. Based on my little research on the skeptics, what the skeptics say about channeling, right? Uh, so some of the points that came about were, can the claims be independently verified with a close study? And is there any empirical evidence or could the information have been acquired through normal means? I think this, uh, and, uh, another valid point was, can it all be uh, the play of the mind? Because even in the script scriptures that I, uh, study mind is described as this very deep and elaborate uh, instrument which has a lot of layers to it so some critics say that when someone thinks they are channeling something it is just a hallucination or imagination of their own mind at a different level it's not that they are not experiencing it but it is that uh, it's not channeling it's just imagination at a different level so what do you say to that I have often wondered mm -hmm. because I mm -hmm. have experienced mental health issues in my life because mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. often wondered, is this just a huge hallucination of mm -hmm. my deepest angst and pain with that complicated mind? And if it is, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm brilliant, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't, whatever you know Absolutely, I couldn't, yeah I, it wasn't like i'm a yeah. scientist going to find the formula and i got the formula it's like correct mm. and and um yeah mm. it, it it is you have to look at what it says it's kind of like i said to those scientists mm. it's like forget yeah. all that 
look yeah, at this just and look you at tell the me, material you tell me yeah. what you think it is you tell mm. me if you think this is mm. my made up mind after you mm. know who i am mm. <laughs> meet me like just as a person mm. Mm. and one of my partners in in the mm. in the beginning the psychic sorority sisters said the other day mm. the reason i mm. knew that it was mm. something extraordinary was because barbara mm. was a hot mess mm. at the time mm. you know i didn't come mm. in be, to to be the spiritual leader mm. i wanted to be a rock i was on my musical career and this was just something i was doing because it was really curious mm -hmm. and it so yes that that's my, mm. my that's my i'd love and i'd love to be put through some tests i'd love to yeah have absolutely yeah the psychologist I think, says about yeah yeah i i think skepticism in everyone is good and we should not accept anything just like that right because it is the nature of uh, human intellect and it will be a disgrace to the intellect if we start accepting everything without questioning it but then i also think based on my experience that we should never dismiss things also just because uh, with a closed mind because a uh, lot of things that we don't think are real uh, do exist yeah. and they'll prove I'm, themselves to be or not right they'll, it'll yeah, prove itself yeah. to be real or not yeah so. whether if it is actually useful and if it is actually valuable then make use of it or else leave it that's all yeah do you think there is any limitations to channeling in terms of uh, based on at what point in time a person died or anything like that uh, in the I'm, I'm asking this because uh, I'll, I'll talk about my little experience with uh, channeling so I was absolutely a skeptic and uh, one day my friend took me to a psychic in India and the the way she uh, did this was different she was not channeling herself but she would take someone she would sort of uh, put her hand on their head and she would sort of hypnotize them and she would uh, make that person unconscious and to that unconscious person the dead person would you know sort of uh, somehow that unconscious person would start speaking and uh, through that conversations used to happen uh, so this is different maybe from what you have wow. seen never heard of that before yeah so i was totally like uh, when my friend started talking about all this in my uh, college when i was studying so i was never open to all these things but then when when i witnessed it right it all happened in front of my uh, in front of me and and to prove me wrong what that uh, psychic did was she took my friend uh, she made her unconscious like uh, she hypnotized her and and she started speaking about things that she never even like she never knew so she started uh, channeling someone uh, after seeing all that obviously i couldn't dismiss all that but yeah that is uh, one thing that i wanted to say yeah coming to the limitations of that uh, f l l what happened was the person who had died used to speak a certain language but because my friend who was unconscious on the bed right now didn't know that language so that information was being communicated us through the language of the channel who who was my uh, friend who was lying down so uh, so that is what psychic explained there are some limitations to it based on so uh, the, the language was one of the limitation and uh, and the next time when we tried we uh, she said she couldn't communicate she couldn't reach that person so what uh, how, like what are the limitations of channeling or and what do you have to say about all this with from your experience i think there's two different things there's a an event mm -hmm. like you're talking about an event that's a channeling and then mm -hmm. there is the nurturing of your intuitive self Hmm. like uh, on a broader level that mm -hmm. to be able to nurture your master yourself mm -hmm. to become more intuitively guided more open to the mystery mm. more intending i think mm. that's what helps grow uh mm. trust and, mm. in self and trust in mm -hmm. self is what is 
essentially needed. Mm. One needs to mm. trust what one mm. is doing yeah. to convey trust. And mm. it's a, you know, it's, it's a mysterious feel. Yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah. And they, they are all different. Like each, each way, there are so many methods and there are so many layers to this reality it's so i feel this reality is stranger than the strangest science fiction movies <laughs> or novels that we like nobody can nobody can make this up like uh, nobody can even if we think of it even if we spend a lot of time making this up we cannot so that is yeah 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 that's how i feel about my life yeah you know you can't yeah. can't have made up how i got to einstein uh. hello there if you wish to understand the true nature of reality and learn about consciousness, conscious creation, and the teachings of the ancient Vedanta in order to live your life with purpose, achieve fulfillment, and consciously create a life that you truly want to live, then you can join our community come learning platform, the Advaitha Conscious Society. For more information, visit Advaitha.com. Thank you. Now coming to that question. So after all this, how did you come to channel Albert Einstein? And when did you like positively know that you were actually channeling Einstein? When my first book came out, mm -hmm. Diaries of a Psychic Sorority in 1998, 1997, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a literary agent to mm -hmm. shop the rights to the book because I thought it was a amazing story of what really just mm. happened to us and mm. she got a call from a tabloid in london it was like a mm. paranormal metaphysical mm. aliens and mm. jesus on the side of the toast or whatever mm. who wanted mm. an interview with princess diana from beyond the grave okay. on the one year anniversary of her death and okay. would i do that and Okay. Skepticism. <laughs> uh, correct. I was uh, terribly skeptical because what? Uh, this isn't. Uh, this is. You know, I've been working for world peace. You know, we're doing conflict it, revolution. You want? You want yeah. me to go to a tabloid and I've never uh, gone to a dead person to try to okay. see. You if were they, not. You know. Okay. Okay. Until until that point, you were never channeling dead people or talking to the dead. Well, or... when I started doing the group with the psychic sorority is when mm. i learned that not only could i talk to people who had passed on but they came to me mm -hmm. people didn't come to me and ask to talk to their dead person the dead person mm. would show up and say i need you to get mm. this message to my son or my daughter or whatever mm. and so you could, you could see them and, or you could hear them like you could see them well the way i describe it is that Okay, mm. I'm sitting I'm sitting in this chair and if I look over there, I don't mm. see the dead person there. I mm. see the dead person here. Like mm. in the in the but not the physical, but in the still in the mm. electromagnetic mm. part of my imagination that we're sharing, mm -hmm. the subtle body that we're mm. sharing. Mm -hmm. It's like I feel mm -hmm. it here. And then I listen mm. for what they say and mm. see how that resonates. Mm. But one was um mm. people i knew their mothers or mm. uh, mm. but i also learned though that i could talk to and communicate mm. with a woman mm. in an alzheimer's coma mm -hmm. i could communicate to her family what she wanted and mm. what she was saying and mm -hmm. the same i have a had a client whose autistic son was 36 mm. and he'd never spoke a word Hmm. So she hired me to sit and she would ask me a question hmm. and I would listen and tell hmm. her hmm. two sessions later, she hmm. knew she could hear him herself. She, I hmm. just confirmed that they already had that communication. Hmm. So, so that's, hmm. that was happening to me. Hmm. Hmm. But hmm. as far as going to princess Diana and on the hmm. anniversary of her death and asking hmm. her for an interview, that just sounded hmm. so gratuitous and, hmm weird to me mm. but i did mm. it i i, I mm. thought well okay let's just try it what what the heck mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i channeled typing both the questions and the answers and okay. printed it off and read it 
and huh. it had me weeping. It was so beautiful okay. and in depth. Hmm. And hmm. the the overarching message that she ended with was hmm. to make peace. Hmm. Hmm. That if everybody who reads this in this hmm. tabloid listens hmm. to her and goes and makes hmm. peace, we can we can achieve this peace that we're going for. Hmm. And hmm. Uh, I hmm. was taken aback by it. Mm. And, and it's strange how like, everybody wants the same, like wh whoever channels and every higher dimension being wants peace and love to spread in the planet. So that's the common thread. Yeah. 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 Mm. And the and the purpose behind all of those ancient mm. oneness, mm. right, is to get yeah. to Got that it. expression, the manifestation of that oneness. So. Got it. Anyway, they flew me out mm. to New York mm. and they interviewed yeah. me and they didn't mm. want it, of course, mm. because it was about making peace. But mm. my agent and I said, maybe there's other dead people who want to talk. Uh, so we made a uh, list of people uh, and some did and some didn't. And then mm. uh, Nicole Brown Simpson. Okay, I don't know. OJ uh. Simpson uh, murdered ha, his wife. Ha, I've heard it. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Uh -huh. And mm. she was, that was profound. That was another profound mm. interview. Mm -hmm. And then when we got to John Kennedy, mm. he, he told us that they already mm. had been planning this. Mm. So they were going to now just tell us mm. who was next. And mm. Albert mm. Einstein came up. And mm. when I, cha I didn't type his, I channeled his. This mm. was sound. <laughs> in my bones it was sound <laughs> it was sound <laughs> from them and probably <laughs> it was the five-year-old me climbing up onto the piano figuring <laughs> out all the music because einstein was very <laughs> much a pianist as <laughs> well <laughs> i mean he was a, <laughs> a violinist <laughs> but <laughs> music was very important to him so <laughs> but did i was i still skeptical for several years <laughs> to oh. the point where I didn't want to mm. say it was him because it, I just mm. listened to the information. Mm. But because immediately it, it, it will, you'll be open to criticism. Like you'll be, when you use names like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm. and mm. I didn't know. Mm. I, I mean, it's a beautiful imagination. And if it's all my imagination, then God mm. bless me. Because that's a mm. big imagination, what happened here. Yeah. And I don't know yeah. how that imagination could have manipulated the people who came in, who made such a part in the whole movement. Mm. And it, I couldn't have done this alone mm. without mm. The, soror the psychic sorority and the testing it on the conflicts. And mm. But yes, mm. and, and after, I think when I really was ready to, to mm. do, to truly say it and even my book it's called imagining einstein mm. it's not called channeling Correct. einstein it's like oh Correct. maybe i'm just making the whole thing up listen to Correct. it anyway listen to what it's yeah. saying yeah and um so mm. yeah mm. so that is how you came to einstein the important thing that i wanted to ask about the unified field theory and uh and even after this podcast, if you could share that um, map that you were speaking about with me. Yes, I, yes, I will, I'll send you. Yeah, yeah, we'll share it. But uh, please take your time and explain it from scratch. What is the unified field okay. theory of Einstein? Mm -hmm. OK, well, it begins th where we first have to agree that at the root of everything is a mystery. Hmm. So at the root of everything is a mystery. And even mm. science, Edward Witten, mm. uh, who coined the String term theory. M theory, yep, M mm. theory, he mm. said M stands for any of these mystery, miracle, mm. manifestation, mm. and mm. and you can use those how you see fit when you're talking about mm. M theory. Mm. So uh, Einstein says. At the root of everything is this mystery. But what brings this all to life is what he calls mm. compassion with a capital C. Mm. And everything mm. in this theory has its mm. very unchangeable mm. definitions, right? We all mm -hmm. think compassion, love, this, and that. No, 
These are very specific mm. scientific definitions and compassion is the fifth mm. fundamental force of the universe. Mm. And it's mm. the intelligence that uses mm. the four fundamental forces mm. to create the uh, mm. matter, the physical world. Mm. The, the four fundamental forces. Electromagnetic. Uh, electromagnetic gravity, force, uh, gravity. Uh. Strong nuclear force and weak nuclear weak force. Nuclear. Hmm. So electromagnetics, of course, ignites things. Gravity hmm. is like a guiding thing. Hmm. Uh, strong nuclear force is like repelling and attracting hmm. movement. And the weak nuclear hmm. force is transformation, like when something turns from hmm. red to green or one to two, the hmm. transforming force. So hmm. in compassion with the capital C is the intelligence hmm. that uses these forces to impel the creation of mm. the physical world one step at a time. Mm. So mm. out of nothing, out of absolutely mm. nothing, the zero point, mm. it's mm. compassion. And mm. it has three influences on mm. this that you are measurable, okay? Mm. One is that it impels energy mm. to step mm. out of nothing and into mm. everything and create mm. a membrane domain uh, hmm. uh, that he calls a compilation of consciousness. So this hmm. membrane domain surrounds all the mathematics hmm. that's going to be you hmm. Hmm. and gives it a, a, a boundary, so to speak, but you still have the whole universe hmm. within there, hmm. but it's all about your hmm. mathematics. What DNA, hmm. space, time, body, what latitude, what longitude, what time, space, hmm. all that stuff that eventually hmm. makes up this physical world. At, so at a certain that, dimension. Hmm. Yeah. So that hmm. the the compass, the hmm. root of compassion hmm. is hmm. like a compass that draws circles, right? So that's hmm. the influence compassion has. It makes energy draw these circles. The second thing it hmm. does is the compass hmm. that aligns hmm. us to true north. Hmm. When you have a compass you work hmm. with the compass and you you're always hmm. aligned to true yeah. north whatever that is yeah, yeah. compassion yeah, you just, ta hmm. takes hmm. these compilations and aligns hmm. them to the true north of the earth so that they hmm. are we're all on the same map you're going to be on hmm. the same map i'm going to be on the same map hmm. and hmm. it's actually zero degrees is true north if you look at a compass the hmm. top is zero hmm. degrees so we're mm. zero degrees of separation from compassion. Mm. That's what we're made mm. up of. And the mm. third thing compassion does, it infuses mm. all of the fractals with all mm. of the truth that we're really mm -hmm. just one being. Mm. So we know. Absolutely. That, mm. So that's, that's mm. what compassion does. It starts mm. the impelling into this mm -hmm. compilation. And then, mm. you know, you have all of mm. the, you know, Barbara mm. with and all the stuff mm. and then the chair and everything. So mm. the next step, this is one step at a mm. time. The next step is mm. when these mm. create subsets, they start to, everything's starting to pull apart. So you, mm. then that's the, it's either the weak nuclear force transforming from one to two. Mm -hmm. And this is me and my body. And this is mm. the outer world. Hmm. And then the two of them go through one more transformation. So there's three hmm. and there's me and my body, the outer world, and then the part of me that can see both. Hmm. And that's what Einstein calls the human intention is that it hmm. starts this intention to intentionally create that you're going to be a human hmm. being. Hmm. Hmm. And from, from here, from this and, mm. and by the way the source mm. of all of mm. this is in the center of the planet the earth center. is like the center of the earth mm. operates like a black hole okay and but, the, the, all but the, the, this is with respect to our planet then let's say there is another planet then it becomes hmm. um well let's let's at, save that question for later because mm -hmm. you'll see yeah, why you continue yeah yeah, yeah 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 but just you know let's let's do the mm. thought experiment mm. i just mm. saw uh brian green last mm. couple months ago talk about how there mm. is a 
smaller black holes, not just the big mm. ones out there, but mm. and that he believes it's in the center of the the earth has that quality. I just heard him say that. So that's another mm. validation. But anyway, so okay. so uh. from this compilation, there's a gravitational wave that leaves the center mm. of the planet, the source, and it's carrying mm. everything that's it's needed to go to the surface mm. of the planet, where mm -hmm. when it gets through all those levels of Bo subtle mm. bodies and then it gets to the physical body then you have the lens mm. and that's where the body is the mm. projector and the perceiver mm. of mm. all of that math that's programmed in the source to create mm. right we are mm. the projectors of it and the perceivers mm. of it mm. and the gravitational wave continues on mm. into space and because this mm. is the microcosm and the macrocosm this is mm. the structure of our compilation as well as mm. the structure of the earth is that mm. literally there's a part of our gravitational wave that is coming through the entirety of and of the planet and helping to create mm. it goes back mm. into the heavens hooks mm. up with the electromagnetic field of the earth mm. comes back down along the north pole back to the center of the earth and it mm. spins again and it spins mm -hmm. and that's the spinning string that they're talking about mm -hmm. and it's spinning yeah. at the speed of light squared mm -hmm. spinning at the speed of light squared mm -hmm. now what makes us mm -hmm. human is that mm -hmm. this reflection of this these three in here mm -hmm. there's a part of us out in outer space out on the edge of the electromagnetic field called the observer mm -hmm. and then the lens and this is what he calls the mechanism of this human intention that the lens serves mm. to kind of comes like a prism it comes mm. down over that speed of light square mm. string and it slows it down to the speed of light where it separates out and now it's all manifesting mm. and so when when our bodies die the that mechanism mm. obviously sort of folds back up but this the string is still spinning Hmm. which is why when einstein wants to speak through me we can just get hmm. our strings together and you hmm. know i can get out of the way and let that flow hmm. come through that but, frequency should so, match. Uh, yeah there's hmm. some hmm. some Compact. however yeah. however it's done hmm. i don't know hmm. but. <laughs> so yeah. the last part hmm. of all this that i just want to hmm. drop in is because hmm. this is really the part we work with on a practical level is that from hmm. the source hmm. gravitational wave to the to the hmm. lens is this non-physical hmm. world where we work with the three human dimensions hmm. so the first level off of the gravitational uh, out of the shoot is emotion hmm. and that then evolves up into the level of intuition hmm. and then that gets up into the level of intellect and by the time you're there everything's getting hmm. ready to right pull into form mm -hmm. and it's these three human dimensions mm -hmm. that are conflicted right now in humanity they have mm -hmm. a way that they work together they have a purpose mm -hmm. that they just like your heart does one thing and your kidneys do another mm -hmm. your emotion is meant to do one thing intellect is meant to mm. do another intuition mm. and they all work together they're like an engine that mm. works and it's mm. very broken right now mm. because people are not listening intuition mm. being the voice the sound of compassion mm. the sound of compassion telling us the next most advantageous mm. step for the good mm. of the whole of this manifestation mm. and of, of this math and then mm. it gets to the intellect Mm -hmm. where the ego is and the mm -hmm. ego's been given the free will mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to say no i i don't want to do all that i'm going to go do this mm -hmm. and here we mm -hmm. all are mm -hmm. so fighting each other <laughs> fighting and mm -hmm. einstein says that mm -hmm. between the intuition which is always going to tell us the mm -hmm. next most advantageous step for the big picture mm -hmm. of course that our intellect mm -hmm. can't see mm -hmm between those two that relationship between intellect mm. and intuition is where all mm. the conflict in the world originate mm. because mm -hmm. if that was fixed and people mm. this is what we're doing with conflict revolution we we go mm. in to learn mm. where that's malfunctioning mm. and what to do to mm. to write that 
And when you do, when you start becoming this intuitive person mm. who is committed mm. to working for the good of the whole, starting mm. with myself, like don't let my, mm. my mind get control. I mean, that's mm. as simple as that. That's the good of the whole. Mm. And it. then mm. also understanding the importance that we're all one body and we have to work for the good of the mm. whole to be whole mm. ourselves. So you're working mm. in a new collaborative way and, mm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that's the, that's the unified field gotcha. theory. And, and then yeah. we break I'm, it I, down I, into, go, uh, you go. I'm yeah. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure like the theory that you explained, I get it completely. I'm, I'll watch it again. But then, uh, when all of this ca came to you, uh, was it expressed in the form of words or, or like, I wanted to ask, what do other scientists say about this? Like, can it can can it be drawn out mathematically so that it makes sense at that level or is it at a philosophical level i think it's like your friend who couldn't channel yeah. the other guy's language exactly yeah because I of don't channel, the limitation of the channel yeah i don't channel yeah. the math yeah but yeah. what he says because, is that hmm. that this theory should spark the mathematicians Mm. to think about that to they to, to do the math of it it should inspire Got them it. it's that frequency so, thing you yeah. pick up a certain oh. frequency i pick up a certain frequency so yeah. so though his understanding is at a different level based on your the way you are you receive a part of it or something like that so but but yes. what has uh like, like have you have you talked to any uh, scientists or people in science regarding all this? I haven't yet. I have people who mm. are amateur scientists or science teachers mm. who have mm -hmm. informed and mm. uh, given feedback along the way. Uh, but mm -hmm. that is where I'm going. That's my mission right now. Mm. Since you explained the unified field theory, uh, I'll, I'll explain the basic premise of uh, Advaita Vedanta because, uh, again, I think it sits well together. So the teaching of these Upanishads that uh, came to these ancient rishis, you know, 10,000 10, years ago, they actually say that it is timeless. But for every every cycle of uh, creation, when humans evolve, this knowledge will be given and it will be transmitted. So they put it that way. But the basic premise of uh, the teaching is that the fundamental reality of uh, this universe is one pure consciousness there is nothing else apart from it but then within that consciousness time space and causation is projected so the word used is maya so within this framework of time space and causation comes all these uh, the creation of the universe and uh, this individual being with our egos we come into being but these egos and these body and mind minds are just masks uh, in reality that absolute god or consciousness is what is experiencing this individual perspective through this mask this is how it is explained and uh, the interesting thing is since you talked a lot about compassion the name given to this absolute reality or God, which is beyond time, space and causation is Satchit Ananda and Ananda uh, translates to bliss or compassion. So this compassion is, uh, you know, uh, explained as God. So compassion, uh, this, it's not compassion is not in the way that we use it. We use it loosely, right? But uh, that bliss or compassion is the understanding of the unity of uh, everything. That Satchidananda is described as the absolute God, the which is beyond time, space, and causation. And within him, the universe has emerged. It is explained in that way. So I think it sort of sits well with what you said. Well, interestingly enough, I, when I wrote uh, the book Einstein et al., which is mm -hmm. the illustrations where the illustrations mm -hmm. came and like mm -hmm. i said i'll send you a, a map and you can look yeah, at the sure. map then as you hear the yeah. description um yeah it, it'll make that he sense. says yeah. he says in the beginning as the whole introduction mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. this body of work that we're presenting to you is based on 
Hmm. every spiritual experience that walked the earth and then he lists off you know Hmm. whatever christianity Hmm. judaism buddhism Hmm. sami Hmm. blah 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 Hmm. all the scientific geography geology Hmm. um everything physical Hmm. science and then Hmm. uh neurological biological psychological Hmm. like this is the theory Hmm. of everything Hmm. so to hear you Hmm. say that and because i never knew that but it mm. just it's another moment mm. where i'm thinking all right yeah <laughs> could be just my imagination <laughs> yeah, because, but yeah it, it, all of it together makes sense because uh, the way it is explained this teaching resonates with me a lot and i try to live by it every single day so they uh, it is very elaborately explained i'm just uh, you know giving a summary of it so basically the, it is said that we in our truest essence is that uh, god or that pure consciousness which which is compassion which is bliss which is all pervading which is infinite but since because of the identification we have with our bodies and our minds and our egos so this ego is um, you know it is just a fiction it is created and because of this fictional ego comes division and because of this uh, division comes all the wars and all the conflicts and uh, everything else but if we just remove the fiction that we have created and if we just recognize our true nature for what it is then that's all there is to it that is how it is uh, explained yeah and that that fits into the theories that we talk about where um mm. you you can't really stop complete the separation right Hmm. there's a hmm. there's a, a non-judgmental utilitarian function of the hmm. separation why you're over hmm. there and i'm over here and the glass is here absolutely so, yeah. Yeah. so it's i always say it's the difference between quitting smoking and dieting hmm. Hmm. when you quit smoking Correct. you just quit doing it but hmm. now we Correct. have to figure out how do we uh. subtly master that hmm. into intuitive intellect i mean intellectual hmm. relationship yeah. but that massive intellectual yeah, level yeah, of ego yeah yeah this division is uh, explained as an illusion so just for the purposes of your life some kind of division is necessary but that is not the way reality actually is so that is what we need to recognize the the deeper level of your reality is such that it is everything is one so it is just everything is being projected in one and the example that is uh, the, you'll find this interesting the example that is given here is of a dream so when we when we dream different dreams so within our dreams we put ourselves as the dream ego and we talk to different people we interact with the dream world it seems like there are a lot of people who have their own independent existence apart from us in the dream but once we wake up we realize that it was all made up in our mind so it was all projected in our mind just like that this universe is being projected in god or that pure consciousness and this separation is kind of uh, just a illusion at this level but it is not at the ultimate level yeah and 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 einstein says that the the hmm. realm your of the hmm. separate in the hmm. lens is mm-hmm. only about 10% of the whole operating mm-hmm. system. So it's mm-hmm. not like exactly. it's not mm-hmm. real in there functioning mm-hmm. as it should, but it's just yeah. not the primary reality. And now mm-hmm. we get to now we get to be our whole selves outside that mm-hmm. realm of the lens. Mm-hmm. But but even uh, based on what you explained about the unified field theory, compassion is in what everything happens. Does that make sense? Compassion or? is like God. Yeah. Yeah, is God. So, huh? So if we think about it, if God has to create the universe, He can create it from nothing but Himself, since He is the only thing that exists beyond universe. Let's say if if God is compassion, and if God has to create the universe from something, He has to create it from Himself. So. there is no, nothing apart from that one source so everything is that but at a different manifestation of it yeah i think more like mm. i think of it as a um mm. like all the different parts of a flower mm. you need to have all these different parts of the flower but it's still the same flower mm. and and i think the the manifestation i personally think that the manifestation mm. that's going on in the lens 
is where the mm -hmm. joy is. It's where the dance mm -hmm. manifests. It's, it's where mm -hmm. everybody gets to see what all that mathematics is meant mm -hmm. to create. So, yeah. so yeah, mm -hmm. but I totally get that in the end mm -hmm. where it's, we're just one, one, we're just yeah. one. And uh, what what is your uh, understanding, or what your what are your thoughts on manifestation, uh, the teachings of law of attraction about creating our lives through our thoughts and intentions? Do you have anything to say about that? Well, I wrote a piece years ago called "Why the Secret Doesn't Work and How to Fix It." Mm -hmm. Hmm. So I'm I'm not a big purveyor of manifestation for manifestation's sake alone. Hmm. Hmm. I suppose uh, the angels told us once, it doesn't take any different amount of alchemy to manifest hmm. a green pencil hmm. or a red Ferrari. Hmm. It's just the red Absolutely. Ferrari has all this intellectual hmm. thoughts about how hmm. you're not worth it. And of course you can't do that. Yeah. It's a all that, stuff. that is holding us. Yeah. Yeah. But I hmm. also think that hmm. we're called here to work for the good hmm. of the whole right now. Absolutely. Maybe we could coast by in civilizations where we're not yeah. dedicated to that. But yeah. the good news is that when we start and make mm. choices for the good of the whole of ourselves mm. and we start to align mm. ourselves with compassion, mm. is what Einstein calls mm. it, aligned to compassion, mm. then we start mm. to bring the change. Mm. We become mm. that change to emanate yeah. outward into the world. And mm. then, then the manifestations become in sync with that. So for example, mm -hmm. when I was mm -hmm. eight years old in my basement with mm -hmm. my hairbrush singing heat wave, mm -hmm. dreaming mm -hmm. of being a rock star, mm -hmm. that wasn't what I was supposed to do. But you couldn't have told me that mm -hmm. for the first three mm -hmm. years of my life. That was what I was supposed to be doing. So if we're not here to just mm -hmm. manifest everything at the drop of a hat, but yeah. if we're working good of all mm. and we're taking mm. care of ourselves then we can manifest mm. what's really high is good for us and isn't that what we want right. to do ultimate meaning and absolutely yeah it's yeah. it's not that the teachings are wrong or anything but uh, it's it's insignificant it's like it's it's only looking at reality par partially like uh because it's like it's almost like empowering the ego right if if we don't understand the mechanics of life we are just empowering ego because uh, i remember when i got the books the, the secret i was young i was uh, in my college and i wanted to get uh, you know first uh, rank in my class that was my goal and for six months i practiced it and i got it but then its utility is, just, is simply that beyond that to understand the nature of reality and to make significant mm. impact to the world i think what you are saying is important to understand the reality in depth for what it is and doing something for the betterment of the entire world yes and uh -huh. when they when we first started channeling the angels when they were angels mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they gave us uh they, we called it the six steps to peace we did six mm -hmm. master sessions mm -hmm. and transcribed them and it each was a piece about how to move out of i call it mm. like self-propaganda mm. when the voices of culture around us are mirrored in our heads and mm. so we're so attached it's like it gave, yeah. gave us a way to break that self-propaganda until mm. step by step with the last session was compassion and really understanding compassion in a new way mm. So we mm. took that and created mm. uh, a workshop out mm. of it and called Conflict Revolution. Mm -hmm. So that is what Conflict Revolution is. And, and is that the message of Einstein and the party in the, the solution of uh, Conflict Revolution? Yes. Mm. That this is a step-by-step, -step, this world peace, one person at a time, starting with the self, mm and step-by-step mm. -step instructions mm -hmm. to once we once we get that between the source and the lens that non-physical mm. three human dimensions in line with mm. compassion mm. feeling our feelings listening to our intuition having our intellect mm. you know mm. there to mm. be in present moment and inform and listen for intuition and make decisions that intuition mm. wants naturally mm. Mm -hmm. what's being projected into the lens will change naturally if we do it here mm -hmm. 
as opposed mm. to doing it here where we're trying to have ceasefires and you have to negotiate mm. with this and that. Mm. That's whatever, well and good. But if mm. we all did this, mm. it would naturally manifest. Mm. It does. On a microcosm, it does. Yeah. When I do it yeah. personally, I yeah. make things happen that I could never go at in the arena mm. in which the conflict is being created just mm. beyond my imagination things that resolve in ways mm. that are mm. like m theory miraculous manifestations yeah. so yeah mm. that, that's my proof that's why i'm no longer skeptical after 35 mm. years i've yeah i've concluded yeah. that this is and good. the good news is science is slowly coming to know its own limitations uh, the 2004 uh, nobel laureate i think his name was uh, Huh, David, David Gross. So he has basically said time space reality itself is uh, doomed. Like time space reality, which science thought was fundamental to existence, like every, every research and everything was done based on this assumption that sp uh, space time was uh, absolute and fundamental. Even that is uh, being questioned now because of uh, various things that are they have found when it comes to spirituality channeling we know that it is beyond time space because uh, yeah. whatever interaction whatever interactions that is happening and all the phenomena that is occurring it's beyond time space there is no time lag between uh, all that yeah and i think those scientists are eventually going to find out that absolutely while yeah it's not the primary reality it's a part of the whole yeah. reality, but it's reality. not the primary yeah. reality. Fundamental. So, yeah. And now and, there's all the simulation it, stuff. Yeah. This entire universe is a simulation. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But interesting, <laughs> interestingly, that is what the Upanishad said around 10,000 years back. Just like how I explained, it, it is all an illusion. It is all uh, made up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, it's just who's pulling yeah. the strings. Yeah. It's 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 mind-boggling if we think about all this, and and coming to one of the last questions, what does God to you? What does God mean to you? Compassion, as we've talked mm. about, that God mm. is, I am God, mm. and God mm. is compassion, and it's my mm. responsibility mm. to mm. Uh, make decisions mm. like a god who is in charge of everything not just okay. one thing not one aspect mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the oneness of the whole so that keeps me mm -hmm. <laughs> daily mm -hmm. basis monitoring mm -hmm. myself witnessing myself mm -hmm. making sure mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's all we can do i think the best we can yeah. do is to love ourselves yeah. and take, to hold ourselves responsible yeah correct and if you had to uh explain all that you have learned throughout your life through your life experience through studying different books if you have if you had to distill all of it you know in a few sentences about the nature of reality about decoding reality what would you say i'd say physical reality 10 hmm. percent non-physical hmm. reality 90 percent it's our t mm. it's our time to explore that mystery. I think mm. it's a mystery, and I love that. Yeah, love that part. Yeah, yeah, and and there's a lot that we don't know about this reality. And finally, Barbara, thank you for mm. spending time thank with you. us. And uh, it was lovely. And uh, maybe we can do it some other time where we can go deeper into some of these concepts. And uh, like I uh, would love please to. Tell, yeah. Uh, please tell people where they can find you, um, your books, uh, and how, yes. ca how can they reach you? Yeah. Barbara with B A R B A R A W I T H dot com. That's mm. me. Also, Synergy mm. Alliance dot LLC. That's all the books. I'm on Amazon as well, but yeah, you can look mm. me up there. Okay. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll make sure Thank to you. link all that. Thank you. Wonderful conversation. Yeah, Thank it was you. really wonderful. Thank you. Namaste. Bye bye. Yeah. Namaste.